Hello everyone, welcome to the IEEE Communication Society podcast series, next episode that we have. Today we are here in uh, Peking University in Beijing, in China, and we are fortunate enough to have uh, Professor Goyadi with us. So she's my friend and a colleague, and she works on a variety of topics around uh, holographic communications, around your near field communications. Do you have any additions for our uh, audience, basically in your background, what you do and uh, what kind of latest work you have been working around uh, these research topics? Would you like to share anything with the audience? Yeah, yeah. Well, my pleasure. Yeah, so, uh, hello everyone. Uh, so today I would like to uh, share our uh, recent uh, research about uh, reconfigurable holographic surface, uh, aided communications and sensing. So uh, in our group, we actually uh, build up a uh, prototype uh, about the uh, millimeter wave uh, holographic surface to serve as the base station antenna. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, uh, according to uh, the the whole structure of the uh, prototype, we also implement uh, and uh, show our uh, holographic uh, beam forming scheme and how it works for uh, the whole uh, various communication uh, and energy efficient uh, sensing uh, applications. Very nice. I would like to ask Boya about your uh, work around, let's say, six G sort of uh, base services, right? So. We know that in uh, 3GP at least 19, you have included energy efficiency as one of the sort of key aspects to work around. So I know that like holographic communication of P formally is linked to energy efficiency, right? In a way, because you want to have this called sort of continuous aperture and you want uh, the holographic image and you take care of the architecture itself in terms of try to have it being forming or whatever, but you need to reduce energy efficiency as well, right? Energy consumption you need to reduce, so to speak. Um, so I would like to also ask you about like what do you think about how holographic communication or holographic deforming links to providing the six year objectives and any practical work that you have been focusing on uh, you so if you can tell us about this yeah. one yeah thank you so uh, so when it comes to the uh, sixth generation communications uh, as you just mentioned that energy efficiency is a quite important uh, topic. And uh, so actually, uh, the 6G, one of the key knowledge of 6G is the massive blind right. which is the large scale uh, antenna array to achieve the high directional gain. Uh, but when it comes to the uh, massive primo, uh we find that uh, if you continue to use the traditional phase arrays to, uh, to achieve this, then you need to deal with the, those complicated uh, fixed shifters and uh, feeding network, mm. uh, which will lead to a high energy consumption. So that's the reason why in 5G, we actually uh, stick to a small scale of uh, an Attila array. So for the 6G generation, we actually try to develop a concept of holographic uh, antenna based communication to achieve the energy efficient solution right yeah so the key uh, so the key word the we have two different keywords the mm. first one is holographic right and the second is at the surface mm. so uh, let's first talk about the uh, holographic part so when uh, when we consider holographic you might think about all those uh, sci-fi movies yeah yes. that, a, that's what comes to my first thing. right right exactly <laughs> so also uh, why can they support? So how can they support all those like um, interesting functions? Because we need the high speed uh, transmission, right? Mm. To support the real time, uh, uh, like VR and AR, right? So the uh, physical layer uh, technique behind this, behind this holographic communication, that's actually the ultra large scale antenna. Mm. Mm. And uh, when it comes to the uh, physical layer uh, implementation or let's say the key technology to support it, uh, we move to the, a type of antenna called a holograph antenna. Mm. So this one is actually, uh, it exists like for over 20 or 30 years already. Right. So yeah, it is a type of an ultra thing antenna array. And uh, the key feature is that uh, you can use it to support a large scale uh, antenna retransmission mm -hmm. because you do not need any fit shifters or uh, controlling uh, circuits. Mm -hmm. Okay. But for uh, such type of uh, holographic uh, antenna, they use the uh, holographic principle. 
So that's the cone. Right, all of reference you need to use. I also see actually here this uh, little green uh, circuit for yes, So yes. basically here, would you like to explain uh, how how it is? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so this type, it's uh, uh, this one is actually a type of uh, reconfigurable holographic uh, metal surface. Right. So it's, uh, let's say it's like an upgraded version mm. of the traditional holographic act. Uh, mm. uh, so when it comes to the uh, principle, uh, it, the, the signal actually transmits from here. So right. this one is connected to the RF2. Mm. And then the signal acts like the EM wave and promulgates along the surface. Mm. Okay, so it propagates as if it is a water wave from here to the end. Interesting. Yeah. Mm. And when it propagates along the surface, every time it when it travels, uh, when it travels through a, an element, it propagates to the free space. Mm. So that's how the antenna work. Very nice. Uh, Very interesting. Yeah. Concept, yeah. So so for the traditional uh, holographic antenna, okay, it uh, it worked like this, and so it can like generate directional beams to the free space. But one uh, limited, well, uh, one feedback. Uh, sorry, but uh, one drawback is that they cannot change the direction. Mm. That's the uh, that's the key. So are there any solutions we are exploring for that? Yeah, Is yeah. there additional yeah, then That's a good question. Mm. So we, if we want to like achieve uh, different directions, uh, different beams, we introduce the metasurface, the reconfigurable metasurface technique in this case. So for each element, we actually introduce uh, like kintayas as right. active components mm. to help us change the uh, amplitude response of the wave propagated in the uh, free sticks. Mm. So, well, that's why we can like reconfigure the, the, the directions right. of the blue. But how about how are we saving uh, energy efficiency here? Because here we are trying to provide this additional step of, step of like being directional, right? So we need some processing to, to yes. enable. Exactly. Like we need this RF chain circuitry or so, and they're very power consuming elements in, mm. in, in the system. So how do we get rid of making them like, you know, using less energy consumption? Okay. And holographic in itself is, I mean, I know that it's linked to, let's say, having an energy efficient architecture, but how can we make it even more energy efficient? Do we optimize some of the circuitry? Do we provide, you know, some sort of algorithm that picks only few few parts of the, of the resources of these RF chains and few parts are, let's say, inactive at point we are not using? So do we run such an optimization or what kind of solutions are you thinking through? To, to think in terms of energy efficiency aspect, yeah. Yeah. So first, the basic of uh, energy uh, efficiency is that we get rid of those phase shifters. Right. Or we also get rid of the element-wise a uh, power amplifier, mm. which exists in a traditional phase uh, phase arrays. Right. Okay. So for such type of uh, antenna array, we only use those low cost and uh, energy um, efficient pin diodes. Mm. And for uh, and also you, you mentioned that how can it be more energy exactly uh, yeah efficient. Mm. okay so that comes to uh, how to control how to well, reconfigure that uh, all these uh, diodes so we have like uh, one uh, direct way is that we try to control which one to work and not. Mm. so you have like and you can use some sort of switching network maybe. It decides which one is inactive, which one is active, right? right exactly. Depending on what your solution returns to you that you feed in. Exactly. In and also, yeah, exactly. Also, another way is that instead of controlling uh, one element at a time, you can like control um, multiple elements at the same time. Right. Uh, but uh, so in this case, you actually can be more energy efficient, but at cost of, uh, let's say, uh, less accuracy when I cut to the uh, view delay. Mm. Well, there's a trade-off. There's yes. a trade-off between the, uh, let's say, directional gain and the uh, energy. Wow, very nice, yeah. And would you like to talk about your poster a bit in, in detail, what you actually present? So I think you have, you have set uh, quite nice details. Yeah. Would you like to also explain, like, because I see some sort of the setup there. So if camera can come closer and show the setup here with the users, with the holographic surface we got and with the host computer. So, and we also got some nice results here. So yeah. would you like to sure. describe a bit of the, of the, uh, the poster, please, for us? Yeah, so just now we mentioned that this, uh, this type of holographic surface can serve as the base station antenna. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the, uh, basically, uh, so here, 
this is uh, actually a structure of the RF chain mm. of the uh, this station part. So we uh, we let the RF chain directly connect to connected to such uh, antenna array. So the the RF chain uh, it, it do not have to be like uh, at a distance from this one. They right. are connected directly. Mm. So that means we have an ultra thin structure Very nice. uh, at the uh, base station. Mm. And then we use this one here. So this one is exactly the same to this one. We use this as the uh, uh, the active unit at the base station. And then uh, it looks at a millimeter wave band, uh, which is actually 26.2 gigahertz. But can it be applied to other bands as well? Stop. Like we're thinking centimeter wave or uh, 6G. Uh, if you're neighbor, do you think like low to mid band spectrum is useful for, for these, or these are more uh, achievable at, at very high frequencies? Uh, they can be achieved uh, at a higher frequency, mm. uh, but uh, with the same structure but different, uh, different like optimized uh, parameter parameters. Right, right, right exactly. Mm. And for this uh, this prototype, we actually developed the uh, whole bandwidth uh, around one gig. Mm. Yeah, so which is already enough for the uh, millimeter wave transmission. Mm. Yeah, mm. and then for the whole uh, transmission platform, we actually uh, consider two different uh, use cases. The mm. first one is about a two user case that which uh, which is that we use this base station to support multi be uh, sorry multi beam and uh, multi stream transmission mm. okay so that's for the uh, first use case and uh, here we also show that we have uh, different uh, data rates are uh, quite high already at uh, around uh, 2 uh, GPS okay and then for the second uh, use case we try to use one to support single user tracking right okay so the user is moving actually which is quite normal mm. uh, in our various communication and we use this base station to track the right. User. Right. Interesting. So it has very good uh, applications in like weightless scenarios and high mobility scenarios. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So uh, actually, the, the the okay for for now the prototype is all about communication, right? Mm. But since it naturally it is a type of antenna, so you can also use it for sensing. Mm -hmm. So that's actually a quite natural extension. Exactly. So it can actually you know. Uh, right. Kind of uh, as a proof of concept, you can take it further to sensing cones together, exactly. sort of only directional sensors and arrows. Right. Uh, if I, if I even directional sense would be quite nice with this, this idea. And recently, Boya, we also did a paper together uh, in TWC in, in IEEE yeah. transaction wireless programs. <laughs> so, congratulations for Stephen Thank you. Uh, getting a paper published. But would you like to discuss something about that paper? Is it linked to this idea, or do we do something different in that work? Mm -hmm. uh, would you like to describe to our audience about the paper a bit? Yeah, so uh, about our uh, latest paper is about how can we use uh, the holographic beam bombing to achieve uh, different uh, beam web. Okay, so when it comes to beam forming, we yeah. know that there, uh, there's different web about uh, the beams. Mm. So naturally, if you, you use a larger antenna aperture, mm. the, that means uh, a larger number of antenna elements, you can get a narrow bed. Right. Uh, sorry, a narrow beam. Narrow beam. Narrow beam, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. uh, but for uh, different applications, actually, sometimes you may not need wide bits. Mm. So sometimes you may need or oh, uh, narrow bees. Right. So in this case, we actually use a unique feature mm. of the holographic surface that is its element can be turned on and off, oh. mm. right? Because we use the amplitude response of the uh, elements rather than the uh, phase shift. So that means we can naturally control uh, the on off state. So when a element is turned off, actually it's, it's a, or we can safely say that we have a equivalent smaller aperture and use this smaller aperture we can generate a wide beam mm. so for our latest work we actually use that how can we uh how we can use these different beam wets to achieve an uh, intelligent beam training mm. and then uh, for a low uh, complexity uh, transmission yeah, very nice. I think this is a very good paper. So I think we'll also be the link uh, in the video about this paper. And I will really recommend our audience to go through that because I really quite like the, the work that we did together on, on, on that paper. 
Um, okay, that's great. So, Boya, I mean, thank you so much for uh, you know sharing your thoughts on the latest research and well meant work that you're doing. Also, the uh, the demo that I've just seen now uh, that you're working on. And also, do you think like uh, from here, what kind of future sort of looks like for holographic beam forming? Because we are also hearing this some tri hybrid beam forming now because we are working around this idea, right? You have this hybrid beam forming as a basement pre coving We have this uh, analog. Out of uh, pre shift of recording and everything, then you got your meta surface layer just next to the antennas. So, what kind of future do you think uh, going forward? Do you think about this beam forming techniques and so? What kind of future you is, you expect? Yeah. So actually, we are uh, moving to let's say the next uh, version. Uh, right. the, the the next version of holographic beam forming is that uh, let's say uh, we have like, different options, right? So mm -hmm. currently we use these options directly to connect these and then we uh, rely on the analog beam forming of this head channel. But right. with what we can do further mm -hmm. is that we can introduce the phased control beam forming here. Right. Yeah. So that means we can add an additional layer, layer. here, right? Yes. Yeah. So to provide a uh, more uh, degree of freedom to uh, achieve uh, in three different aspects. First, the uh, holographic part that is uh, that uh, takes the function of uh, analog beam forming, mm -hmm. the, uh, and second, the traditional uh, digital beam form base at, at the base band. Right. Right. And then at the uh, actually at different arc chains. But so uh, that case before it enters these antennas, we can uh, add different fit shifters. A, uh, actually, a small amount of fit shifters right. would add up to more. Uh, the great operator. Very nice. I thought it looks very interesting, uh, Boya. So thank you so much, Boya. It was really nice to chat with you and we will meet in the next episode of uh, the IEEE Communication Society podcast series. Stay tuned and thanks again, Boya, for, for spending your time and see you next time with our new ideas and new works and new sort of discussions. Mm -hmm.